The Jerusalem Post met with Anat Hoffman, the chairwoman of the activist group Women of the Wall, at her home in Jerusalem. Since 1988, the Women of the Wall have campaigned for equal worshipping rights at the Western Wall. In May, the Supreme Court finally ruled that the group can worship at the Wall without fear of arrest. But the ultra-Orthodox community fiercely opposes such a move, and the group still awaits a government solution. Tell me a little bit about who is in the group, the Women of the Wall, with you, who is campaigning with you, which denominations are we talking about? We call each other sisters, and we've been together for many, many years. Um, on the board, you have Orthodox, Reform, Conservative, and Unidentified Women from all walks of uh, religion, and we see ourselves as sisters. I don't know of any other Jewish groups group that prays together from all denominations, and certainly not in the open space. I don't know of any sidu, any prayer book, written by a group that comes from all denominations. You either pray from a conservative sidu, or a reform, or orthodox, but to be, to be able to write one text and read from it, our ability to overcome our own barriers, to get rid of the partition between ourselves, is probably our biggest achievement. If this isn't about orthodox versus reform, what is it about? Is it about modernity versus traditional extremism? What, what, what's the struggle for women at the wall? Division. Well, when you say the wall is like an orthodox synagogue, well, it's not like an orthodox synagogue, it's like an ultra-orthodox synagogue. Israel has taken the keys to the holiest site of the Jewish people and handed it to one minority faction in the Jewish people. And that would be all right if that faction was sensitive, open, and respectful of all other denominations, but no, it's taken over and it's dictating life choices. There's no voluntary anything going at the wall. There is a very strong dictate on what, how particularly women have to behave. And the women's section is uh, a quarter of the men's section. For a woman to approach the wall is a difficult issue. For a man, nothing at all, because there's 48 meters for a man to approach the wall and only 12 for a woman to come and approach it. The sad thing for me as an Israeli is that uh, instead of Israel being the leader in the Jewish world for innovation, modernity, pluralism, tolerance, equality, Israel is being dragged on its, by its hair to get to this point of being a leader in Jewish innovation. That's terrible. One would think that the Jewish state would be the club med of the Jewish soul, the Disneyland of the Jews. This should be the place where there's diversity and openness. Instead, I have to go to Los Angeles to experience diversity and, and many products on the shelf. Natan Sharansky put forward a list of recommendations uh, on, off the back of the call of Women of the Wall, uh, suggesting ways that uh, we can resolve the conflict at the Kotel, ways that uh, people of all dominations, men and women, can pray at the wall. Uh, tell me a little bit about that list, that proposal that he put forward, and where is it now? He started a process which I applaud. He started speaking to all the feuding parts of the Jewish people and came up with a plan. The plan is wonderful. The plan will allow one topographical and geographical wall, one wall, divided, yes, to two, a uh, plaza that is e egalitarian and a plaza which is not. It will have one entrance. It will be open 24 hours, seven days a week, free of charge. It will be on the same plane and will be run by one body that actually decides together. Sharansky gave his uh, recommendations to Netanyahu, but instead of bringing them up for the, a vote in the government and implementing them, he appointed a new commission. On the 22nd of May, 2013, he appointed a new group. Basically, he said to the new group, come up with a solution different from that of Sharansky, <laughs> because why appoint a new group if the Sharansky plan is to be implemented? Their decision is not expected to be anything like the Sharansky plan. It will have a little bit of the coating of the Sharansky plan, but it won't have the crux of it. Now, one sometimes asks me, where do you compromise? Here is where I compromise. In a year, there are 8,760 hours. 
Women of the world demand one hour a month. That's 11 hours a year. That's a compromise, big time. And we want one hour a month, one hour in the early hours of the day. That's Didn't you it. say you're asking for too little? I'm asking for too little. I want a foot in the door. I want that much. I think I want to give whatever girl there is on this planet that wants to have a bat mitzvah, I want to have a shot at it. It may be limited now for a few bat mitzvahs a month, but right now a study recently shows that only 1% of Israeli girls have had a bat mitzvah of any content. There are people within Women of the Wall who are from the Jewish diaspora. Do you feel that the Jewish, Israeli, secular, predominantly secular public in Israel, do they, do they care about what the Women of the Wall is doing? For many years, no. This was an import. The whole idea of fighting for women's equality at the Wall came from women who came on a visit here, on the Conference on the Empowerment of Jewish Women. These women came from United States, Canada, UK, different places uh, around the world. And they're the ones who brought this idea. And this idea was ahead of its time. It didn't evolve naturally here. Now it's come to its own. I think the most symbolic representation of Israeli interest in us was when the paratroopers came to join us. When the paratroopers from 1967, these old guys that in 67 were in their 20s and captured the wall and liberated it, when they joined the Women of the Wall and said, we are your brothers, you are the new paratroopers, uh, that was when things started turning for us. Israelis have relinquished control over so much of religious practice in Israel, out of ignorance and out of a lack of confidence that they have something to contribute. The result is, we see it in a variety of ways, where religion is concerned, Israelis have just uh, not been able to say, this is mine too. We've seen some of the reactions of the Israeli ultra-Orthodox men at the Kotel when the women of the wall were praying uh, earlier this year. Uh, there was a lot of um, quite violent behavior, people throwing things at the group. There was also uh, some quite uh, shocking behavior coming from the ultra-Orthodox women. Did this uh, reaction towards the group surprise you? The great majority of ultra-Orthodox men and ultra-Orthodox women are ignoring the women of the wall. This is the great majority. There is an incited minority. There is an incited minority that has been incited by rabbis. We, uh, we can follow the rabbis that uh, say to them that what women of the wall are doing is the, the worst thing that's happened in the Jewish people. And they are misbehaving in a, in a terrible way. I don't think in any way they should reflect what the ultra-Orthodox community feels. The story is a, a territorial war. The rabbis that are inciting against Women of the Wall are worried about relinquishing some power. Women of the Wall's been going for nearly 25 years now. Uh, how long have you been with the movement? I'm one of the founding members. I've been there in December 5th, 1988. And since then, I've been with the Women of the Wall. This is so, a, a long time. It's a, a generation, lifetime. a lifetime. And I'll tell you, I, with all due respect to the important cause, and it is an important cause, we've developed a unique community. And when I am absolutely unable physically or mentally to go there again for one more round, what makes me go there is my sisters. And this is a, um, I think, this is a, an amazing achievement. The fact that it's an Orthodox woman, a conservative, reform, non-identified, that are running this whole thing for years. We've been married together, mothers together, now we're grandmothers together. We've, this is what gets me out in the, to, for one more round. And when they're, they've had it, I'm the one who gets them up. And we've become a community, and that prayer, praying with women of the wall, has become the place that I find kavana, I find focus, and I find meaning. And the hundreds of women who join us every Rosh Chodesh, and the men that have been starting to stand there in support, they, it's a meaningful experience. I think Israel should embrace the women of the wall. It's time to say, ladies, now that you're grandmothers, we thank you. 
We thank you for liberating the wall once again for the variety and diversity of Jewish practice. We welcome the new bat mitzvah girls that come in. Let us finish our historic role, close shop, and deal with something else that has to be fixed in Israel. It, sending us back is impossible. I mean, send, telling us now you should be going elsewhere or you should find other things to do, it's, it's too late.